So uh, today we're very happy to hear Ngoc Nguyen from uh, Milano, uh, who will talk about vile laws with interactions. So the stage is yours, Nick. Um, so uh, thank you for um, the invitations. And I, as usual, I will just thank my sponsor also that give me my ones. Uh, my other segment here. Okay. So everybody is happy. So um, today I will speak about uh, one of my um, old work. Um, would be some mix between uh, many bodies um, come to mechanics and um, the, the vice law that's well known in spectral geometry. Ah. How, how can I ah, switch? So in the first time, I will introduce the objects and the link between them, and then maybe give a sketch of um, the new proof. But we'll see. And don't hesitate to interrupt me at any time. So it's based on this, um, this preprint, who has the same name, but you can find an archive. So, okay, so let's start with, ah, I don't manage to um, to give some informal introductions. I don't know if you're so, uh, so familiar with uh, fermionic particles. Okay, so let's do, I, as um, everybody don't know. So fermionic particles in quantum mechanics, no. Uh, it's not so intuitive. So, or like little hedgehogs, and very furtive, and it's very hard to catch them in the night when they, they just run like this. And um, in in quantum physics, um, one of the main challenge is to understand them. And for instance, we, we can um, try to understand the probability of presence somewhere in the space we are moving. Here I'm considering the um, Euclidean space, but of course uh, you can change of the setting to be some on some manifold, on some lattice, but today I will be focused on um, RD. So the more it's pinched, uh, that your probability of presence uh, is, uh, the more probable you, you have uh, your particle here, and um, the fermionic particles have the property that they cannot occupy the same quantum state by the poly exclusion principle, and so you, you cannot expect to have uh, these um, fermionic particles in the same place if you don't uh, force them to. Okay, and uh, we want to understand um, them what happens uh, when you take a large number that tend to infinity, um, you add some interaction between each other, and in our case, we trap them together in the confining potential. So it's easy for the informal introductions. So uh, let's go um, to more deeply in the subject, and in quantum mechanics, um, you you represent your um, uh, space of state by an inverse space. In our case, it's our LD space on RD. Of course, you can take some complex values. And um, the informations of the density of presence of the particle are given by the eigenfunctions of the so-called Schrodinger operators, which is part of with a part of kinetic energy with the Laplacians plus a multiplication um, by uh, a function, a real function V. And in, in this case, we take some confining one that's, that's mean that tend to infinity when um, X tend to infinity. Uh, the typical example here is to consider the harmonic potent um, oscillator, yes. And 
So what happens if you fix some energy, of course, independent um, um, of order one uh, with respect to the Planck constant? So um, in, in our case, uh, the vice law that everybody knows is, um, is the asymptotics of the number of uh, eigenvalues of the your operator pH result uh, in some interval. Uh, here we considered um, the interval minus infinity e, and um, of course a good parameter to consider in quantum mechanics is to take the so-called class semi classical limits. But you then you take your semi your parameter at dimension h and you tend it to zero in order to link it with the uh, classical uh, properties of um, the, the associated classical system. I don't will go deeply in, on it, but that's it. That's the idea. So, and note that this number of eigenvalues, uh, less or equal to e, are also the, the rank of the associated spectral projectors um, on, um, of course, the uh, eigenfunctions associated to a, the eigenvalues less or equal to e. And it's also, um, it's also called the integrated uh, laws because you integrate uh, the internal kernel at the diagonal on all your space. And the point wise vice law consists on the contrary to understand um, the same asymptotics at the, the same limits of this kernel of the pro spectral projectors in the diagonal or out of the diagonal, which is uh, more difficult, of course. And this is the vice law that is classically known in the literature. So let's have uh, some zoom on it. If you agree, but if you disagree, I, I don't care. Um, so um, historically, uh, this vice law is conjectured by Hilbert. But um, since it is pulled by Weil, it gives you it's his name. And it was uh, mostly proven on compact, smooth Riemannian manifold, I guess, for um, uh, Laplace Beltrami operators. And, and of course, there are some engineers to a lot of of over manifold improved um, with um, with some uh, reminder and that you can improve or not. And uh, in our case, if you take the Schrödinger operator, uh, you can find uh, some proof in the book of. Uh, best guys, but I know that if you have uh, some better reference, it's fine too. And um, the bond wise vice law is more difficult and uh, have proven later, but actually, it was first done on compact manifold by Avak Mukovic and Viviten and proof generalized for elliptic operators by Armando some years later. And um, in the Euclidean case, um, I should mention that it's it's more complicated because um, you the point is that if you have the points wise vice law, you can just integrate it savagely and find the integrated one. And it's work on manifold because they are compact, but on the RD um, case because of the presence of the potential is not that simple. Act because actually, based when you have some potent confining potential, you will have three types of different regions who will have appeared. I guess um, related to your energy E and your pot potential phi. So in, in, in classical mechanics, 
you can expect that all your eigen uh, functions are localized um, in in the bulk in the, or the semi-classically allowed regions at all the points such that your potential v v x is uh, less than your energy, and um, and far for these regions, it's not it's expect to have um, nothing. So that's why if you you look at the profile of the density of your spectral projectors, you will have some. Um, here I represent um, uh, the profile of the spectral projectors uh, for uh, the scalar harmonic oscillators. I I forget to to mon mention it. So I'm saying that in the classically forbidden region, you expect to have um, no presence of particles. That's why you have something exponentially um, small in in terms of uh, your positions and the semi-classical constants. And of course, something happens where um, and the transition between them, but I will not go in detail. So most of the mass is is localized in the classic in the classically allow regions, and we can say that the particles this this family of particles tend to delocalize because actually they are all stuck on the the same place and they don't put them all, all together to some precise point. So. Um, we can see that uh, that in this um, semi-classical allow regions, um, your uh, density tends to uh, pass guys with here, and in this case, it's the semi-class, uh, the semi-circle law, yes, with uh, some constant which depends on the volume of the unit bolt on the of the Euclidean space. And um, yeah, um, so actually the result uh, for the integrated law gives it uh, this, not only this um, equivalency, but some, um, some error of order h over d minus one. Yes, and something smaller. But yeah, mostly you 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 have this law, and it's not only um, true for uh, harmonic oscillators on one D. It's it's also the case on the um, um, uh, larger dimensions and for uh, more general um, confining potentials. And this case of Euclidean in in the case. Of Euclidean space with confining potential, this more general result um, is proven uh, by Delport and Lambert some years ago. But they prove it um, what happens against the turning points, the, the point in the transition regions and the semi classically allowed regions with, uh, with a good scale um, and uh, the optimal reminder. So that's a great result. Okay. And um, how do are they linked to our many body problem? So now we we add some um, also some pair interactions between each each particle. We consider that the two particles are interacting between each other. So Okay, don't worry about all these notations. I will go slowly. And um, in, instead of considering also uh, only the one particle uh, space, uh, we considered one for, for the n particle that you you labeled um, from one to n uh, with uh, the position xg and. Uh, the good bit pairs now it's a kind of you can tensorize uh, your L2 space uh, n time and um, 
And here, of course, you, you want to, to add the fermionic properties. And, and is, is it encoded by the fact that uh, if you take some uh, states, uh, if you permute two, um, two positions, you will have some minus sign between it. It's what I, I, um, I called anti-symmetric space. So, so okay. And then um, now uh, your energy, so your quantum energy of your particle uh, will be almost a Schrodinger operator, but but you duplicate n time, and you add some uh, more interactions between each particles with some uh, coupling constant. Here it's h bar. Uh, D, but but of course there is some link between um, the semi-classical co constant and the number of particles, and we come on later. And um, of course, ide ideally, you want to know um, the squared um, the model squared of your eigen uh, functions of p h n. But it's not that so so simple. So uh, we can restrict, or most of the literature restrict um, their study to the n body density uh, uh, matrix, where some operators. Um, but you can define with uh, their integral kernel. So here I on only considered this uh, one body operator density. So, which is an operator on the the one body space L two of R D. So it can give you some distributions of um, of your group of your n particles. And yes, and and encoded the fact how they behave in some some point if you take the diagonal. So uh, I just have a question about sure. this uh, operator. So can you see it as a sort of correlation function? Yes, um, totally. OK. So you can encode it and um, regret it uh, like a correlation function. But for me, uh, it's more easy to, to see it like this. But that's pretty the same. So, um, so an example, um, an anti-symmetric uh, wave, uncorrelated wave functions, the simplest one is the one that every physicist know is the Slater determinant for some determinant because you, you take um, uh, n orthonormal um, eigen not not again function, but function bunch functions on your one body Hilbert space, and then um, you you associate them together to to have uh, these states. So it gives you um, it can describe uh, the some family of fermions of fermi of fermion states. So, and what is interesting is that uh, if you considered um, its one body density matrices, is it exactly um, the kernel of uh, the projections on this family of functions? So we, we, we find in some way um, the spectral projectors that we see before, it's um, so sorry, I with some some interruptions on my office. So uh, I'm I'm so I'm sorry. <laughs> so 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 yeah. So in this this case, you, um, uh, the 
uh, one body density matrices is the projections of this on this orthonormal family. And another remark is, is that uh, your spectral projectors that we considered before can be always seen like a minimizer of the functional but associated your one body density mat matrices gamma whereas a self adjoint linear operator on your, sp uh, your Hilbert space that you give uh, the condition to be a positive um, and non-negative, sorry. And uh, also you add the fermionic conditions. When I, I, I say minus equal to one, that means that its operator norm is less or equal to one. And you considered um, the functional associate on this space and you associate it to the trace um, on um, your operators uh, minus your energy composed um, um, your Schrodinger operators minus E composed to uh, this um, one body density matrices. So um, I showed you before um, um, the case when you have some interaction with particles. So we can wonder what can be the equivalent. So I, I don't give you so, so much suspense and uh, I introduce you um, some uh, known approximations in n-body uh, quantum problems. So, so in this field, um, you, you can mostly uh, reduce uh, your um, world problem to um, uh, to the same uh, on um, Slater determinants. So uh, I introduce you uh, the artery reduced artery functionals. It's globally um, the the same uh, kind of operator uh, that you, I show you before, plus some interacting term. And when I I told you um, the two artery functional have also an exchange term, but for some, but for to be more simple, I will just keep it. And it can be defined uh, with some, uh, with your uh, interacting potentials and the density of uh, your, your gamma. So we can wonder how we behave the minimizer of the artifact functionals. Uh, at the, the, the limit h tend to zero. Yeah, this is what I, I told here. And um, what I, I was, when I said before, actually, um, this uh, approximations is, um, is, some, is, is done um, because of uh, Slater determinants. Because actually, if you take your um, n many body uh, quantum um, uh, um, energy uh, and uh, you take the energy and you you and I think it's not n, but with some type of it's not so important. You have the energy and and you evaluate it uh, on. Um, your uh, your wave functions here you take Slater determinant is exactly equal to uh, your artifact uh, functional evaluated in um, its one body matri uh, matrices on of your uh, plane wave uh, not plane wave but your um, your state plus some error was smaller than the over term. And um, moreover, you, you can see that uh, your artifact um, functionals on some one body density matrices is exactly uh, the trace on uh, some uh, effective Schrodinger operator 
uh, with the part you know with uh, the kinetic and the external potential part with uh, another um, a potential that depends on uh, on the interaction W and on the density of uh, of the one body density matrices here that you evaluate to itself. So you can again you can um, go uh, go again to a one body problem. But here the problem is is it's not linear anymore because it's depend of on gamma h. And so a lot of of people uh, try to to um, to show for the first inequality. In some uh, for some special pot potentials, and especially when you make the limit at n tend to infinity, that is related to h in some some way. And um, for instance, for instance, you can uh, read all the historically paper of Lip Simon Black and lot of guys who shows that this approximation is good. Um, there's also the paper of back solo wave. And yeah, I can give reference after that. And so and in the literature and physics, people are most interested by Columbian system. But you can find also more general uh, results more recently. In the in, in, for instance, in the paper of Fournier Levin Solovich. So you have a lot of literatures about that. So it's give some ideas here. And um, so, what is the candidate on, on the limit? So, is it well known at, at, least, at, at least if you fix the number of particles uh, n? Um, uh, to be uh, yes, to be n and you tend n to infinity, but the the minimizer of arctic functionals, um, and if you take its density, it will tend to um, uh, the minimizer of the so called Thomas Fermi energy with another another approximations in density, um. Theory, I don't remember. Yes. So we, we would present like this uh, with uh, some uh, kinetic energy in the first part, uh, the one of an external potential in the second part with V, and uh, again the direct term that you can find here. And uh, you, you can you can see that the minimizer of, of Thomas Fermi functional satisfies the um, these equations called also Thomas Fermi, and you can and actually, uh, if you replace uh, your double u by by zero, you find exactly the limit on the Weiss law uh, with uh, the constant and and e, e minus v. Uh, but you take the um, positive part at the power d, uh, d over u. So uh, in this uh, preprint, um, I take some confining potentials and a, a repulsive um, pair interaction, but you take something positive or, or something that behaves as it, and add some assumption and regularity of them. And um, I prove that if you integrate uh, the density of the artifoc minimizer, it tends to what you think. Um, for each point or uh, uh, if you integrate it. So, but, to do so, actually, it it's implies over result, like the convergence of the lowest energy uh, of 
Euh, ja, ja Artifak. Euh, ja, yes, ja Artifak. Euh, Fonctionnel to the, the, the ground state of Thomas Fermi when but also you can prove that um, the ground state of the world system is equal is the this limit is also equal to the one um, but of your artifact approximations and of course to to prove it I use that the minimizer of Artifolk sometimes behave like uh, these uh, spectral projectors on some effective operator, like I, I showed you before. Oh, sorry. So, um, let's wait. So, actually, all of these results, as I told you, are well known in uh, in the literatures, especially if you you fix the number of particles. In, um, in a regime called minfield, where uh, you have a lot of particles, but they are with, um, but they're not, but uh, yes, but the interaction is not so intense. So I think we can uh, explain it in this way. So, and I take the coupling n uh, equal h over minus. Uh, 1D, so when H to 10 to 0, N 10 to infinity. And um, I actually, um, the result of the weak uh, limit uh, of the densities is already proven by uh, the, the paper from the living Solovage. And uh, the point wise uh, one um, by this paper of, of Coulomb, which uh, later, but not so known, so it's good to, to do some uh, advertisement by it. So I adapt res this result in this not, uh, grand canonical settings. That means that the, your particles are not, the number of particles not fixed, but allowed for the system to fluctuate between each other. But, but actually this number of particles is implicitly the trace of uh, your, um, uh, of density um, gamma h, that is n um, globally. So, so I prove uh, not only uh, this uh, convergence of uh, the integral and the density at each point, but it proves also uh, the convergence of the energy, the energy of Artifoc, and also uh, the ground, uh, the ground. So then what are the main uh, step of the proof uh, to prove at least the integrated uh, one? Um, actually, the proof is, uh, is available not only for minimizer, but for a larger class of them. You can allow, um, you can allow um, 12 states but behave like minimizer, but with some error. And the error is, is what you expect of uh, a little o of h over 1 over d. And um, of course, you can prove that um, if you take good assumptions, um, your uh, uh, your um, artifact functional is coercive, so you 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 have um, you the conditions of the trace of um, on on your trace or on the number of particles are satisfied is what I I write here in the lemma, and um, then um, I modify I just readapt in a simpler way the proof. Uh, of the, the paper I mentioned before to prove some weak limit on the density. So you can prove that uh, you, you can find a minimizer under good conditions and we have some uh, convergence, weak convergence up to sub some subsequent if the minimizer is not unique. And the fact that uh, you have some potent, 
a confining potential, you can prove without so much effort that um, that if you integrate uh, your density of um, r triple minimizer, almost a minimizer, it will tend to what you think. So it's pretty easy. But I want, I will what I will not go to the the, uh, the proof of the weak by its law because it's quite classical. So so I will instead um, spend more time to give some ideas of how to prove the weak one. So I assume to take some repulsive potential and with good regularity in order to work. And I guess that if we work uh, more, we can have uh, weaker conditions, but it's what I, I, I considered in my work. And um, a classical result that you can prove in this case is that you can find some minimizer who are some projectors of effective um, uh, Schrodinger operator. I call it like this, but actually uh, the operator in, um, in uh, um, your projections is called uh, mostly in the literature's uh, art work. Uh, Millfield operator, something like this. Yes, and it's, it's like I mentioned um, in the beginning with uh, your um, um, a term which depends on the density of gamma H, but if you consider real artifact minimizer, you have some, some realm, some term linked to uh, the exchange term. But in the limit, actually, uh, you can show that it tends to the same thing. You can forget the term with X. So it's a little cheating here, but to be more exact. And um, the proof relies on another result um, proved uh, by the technique of, of Comlon. And it says that if you take um, some um, um, external potential will depend of H and that tend that something else uh, uniformly. Um, you, you can prove against the vice law uh, with a uh, chap one. Yes, and of course you you apply it to our case with V trap equal V and VH equal um, H over D uh, rho of gamma H um, that you use movement with W. And, and you can see why I take W in C1 with uh, um, the bonded deri derivative. Uh, all right. So um, actually the main ingredient of this proof uh, is um, is actually to prove some um, some bounds on um, uh, how the propagate uh, yes the propagator of ensemble group associated to Schrodinger uh, operators, but prove that um, the first term with um, with uh, some power of t, uh, d over two, implicitly t is is h is linked to h, um, and and it, and the first term tend to uh, uh, w um, zero, and um, actually you don't you only have to prove this kind of theorem. We could be before this uh, first uh, limit corresponds to uh, the first one in the Arctic Little Wood Tobian theorem, that in, in view, uh, purple here. And then you can deduce something on, uh, on these um, measures. So let's detail it. 
So, so actually, um, we have some, yes, uh, I have some uh, gamma, but gamma it's I think, uh, the reverse of, of T, yes, of T, you, you take um, your double, um, W um, T equal um, so the trapping potential plus uh, uh, your um, VH uh, with your energy and um, you take the right measures um, which are uh, up to um, some multiplicative constant um, your perspectile projectors of the Schrodinger operator uh, plus uh, um, a gamma um, w gamma this we call the gamma u at um, but at the point x so you fix your point x everywhere and um, of course uh, you take for uh, m infinity um, what what you think up to some um, multiplicative term uh, d over two, but it will be disappear at the end. So that's why um, that's why if you 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 put the constant in the same side, you can find um, at the end uh, the uh, vice the vice law the point vice law that you want to prove and. And to do that, you have only have to prove uh, the the semi equality. So it's just some calculation. It's not so interesting. Um, and actually, uh, to prove it, you 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 can write it in a probabilistic way, or or if you're afraid of it, like me, you can write it. With a lot of integral, uh, and it's the same uh, in yes, it's the same. You can write it with integral. Um, yes, so let's. I will present you the probability tick way. So the one written in in Coulomb uh, paper. So. Okay, in the first step of the proof, you write your first your first term um, with uh, your projectors like some integral of or some the measures of of all path um, all continuum path between um, the you take some close um, continuous. Uh, Yes, and between uh, zero and t, such that, uh, but you start from x, and and you integrate uh, the exponential of uh, one minus uh, one over t, and um, the integral of uh, your path composed uh, with your function double uh, w u t up to this measures. And, um, and now you considered, um, you, you, you take some um, delta and you, could, you, you, you will cut your integral in two parts. Um, you, you take uh, all the path such that um, the distance the maximum distance uh, from beta uh, s of between zero time zero and t or s or equal that your your delta. So you cannot go um, go through some balls and the other one. So um, and here I I just write some some good. Uh, extra term, but instead of cutting in two, I cut on three, 
um, in order to find again uh, your um, uh, exponential minus um, wtx to have the, the the limit so it's on the first term and and you just have to show uh, stupidly that the two uh, last term tend to zero so you have two limits uh, you have the uh, of course the limit t which tend to zero and also the little parameter uh, delta that you want to erase at the end so the first term just tend um, to the principal term of the limit um, because of the, the uniform uh, convergence that you, you have in the beginning and you have by continuity uh, your measured uh, will tend to to one uh, when um, delta tend to to zero to zero and um, of course you can just bound uh, in a good way uh, the, the second term with the modulus of continuity of um, uh, of modulus of x um, exponential x which is a good function and but this modulus of continuity will tend to zero uh, when um, the parameter you make tend uh, the inside to zero and actually so it's not so interesting so it's 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 just going well <laughs> So I don't want to bore you too much. And the last term, it's the same uh, with uh, this, the only technical part for uh, someone like me who hasn't do pro probability since um, my studies um, is to um, just uh, Just assume or to to understand that uh, um, the measures of uh, your um, set, uh, your set, uh, all the, um, the complementary of the set n um, delta is very small, um, and act actually it's some exponential um, minus something and and when we you make uh, your delta um, your t tend to infinity it's very small so you you take the double limit and everyone is happy you find your your bound and that's it but however i should say that this proof um, does not provide um, some estimations of the remainder so we don't know if they are what the form uh, it's from is it on on what power of, of h is it look with some logarithm we don't know and we can expect to have it with other topologies for instance Wasserstein distance or i don't know ideally um, some point wise estimate on um, a C infinity norm on, com on compact manifold, uh, no, not no, no, but on, on every compact set, like in the paper of Delporte Lambert. Um, I, actually, it would be very great to have something um, like their paper and to have some big pictures with uh, special functions, like what is that it, it exists uh, without interactions. So, I don't know if it was so clear, but... Um, so, thanks for your attention. Oh, thank you very much. Um, thank you very much. Yeah, thanks for a nice talk with uh, a lot of uh, nice illustrations. Uh, does anyone uh, have questions? Uh, you can type in the chat if you want. Uh, 
Maybe you had some? Yeah, maybe I have one, but more than a question is a curiosity. So if you, instead of uh, RD, you take some compact Riemannian manifold, you have the while law for the Laplace Beltrami operator. Yeah. And uh, in these asymptotics that you've shown, uh, um, for the free, let's say for the free particle, you have an interpretation on the different geometric interpretation on the different terms that appears in the asymptotics. So do you do you have something similar also for some choice of confining potential? Or is, is that approachable with your methods? Or? Um, what do you mean by uh, interpretation of each term? Like uh, like the leading term in the in the count of the, the eigenvalues for uh, for the Laplace Beltrami is uh, is just the volume of the manifold, yeah. then times t to some power. Then the sub the first subleading will be if there's a boundary the the, the the measure of the boundary and so on. So, but this is for the free let's say for the free particle. Do do you expect to to have something in the spirit for some confining potential or? Uh, actually, um, you have, um, I, I don't know if it was so clear about it, but it's, um, is it basically, so, so yeah, perfect. Um, there's two guys, uh, my collaborator, uh, Delport and Lambert, who just um, provide some um, uh, point wise laws uh, around uh, for uh, uh, points in the bulk or in the classically forbidden regions, but they, they just provide uh, the first term at some scale that I precise, uh, yes, on, on the site. On, uh, I think on near the, the, the turning point is on H over one over three, something like this, and and in the bulk of on the scale H, but they give uh, only the first term with some um, rem reminder. But I I don't know if they go, if they don't if they don't go below uh, the expansions. I have can ask, I can ask to my collaborator, but but for now it's. Already a big result to have it, um, because of this confining potential. Uh, the first term and a good and the optimal reminder. It's a for now it's such a big step. Okay, thank you. Um, are there any other questions? Uh, well, if not, uh, let's thank me again. And uh, yeah, we can clap. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much. Um, yeah. Thank you. And uh, thank you. see you soon for other talks and events.